morning, everyone, and a happy Women's Day for all the women in Uganda and all over the world. I was listening to the women's anthem just a few minutes ago, and it was quite, it was quite good. Eh? I was even getting some ideas for a men's anthem. Eh? If, uh, you know, if that day ever comes, eh, when we celebrate, you know, we have a men's day. Yeah? So when that time comes, yeah, we've got some ideas from the, from the anthem of the women, and you know, we shall sing our anthem as well. Eh? It was, it's really a good day. We shall be looking at so many of those events taking place in Kololo. Yeah, that will come up sometime uh, from now. But uh, you know, for the moment, let's, uh, you know, let's get back into these financial markets and yeah, we'll see how these things are affecting us, especially the, you know, the Brent crude oil. Eh? That has been the topic on everyone's, you know, on everyone's lips. Eh? We are talking about the Brent crude oil and the prices. You know, the price is now close to $130 per barrel. Yeah, and that is very bad. You know, Russia is threatening that you know, prices will even reach $300 per barrel. That will be very, very bad for us. Eh? You know, it hits us like a wave. Yeah, you see it happening on the news, and you think it is so far away that we won't be affected. Eh? Then when our stock gets done and we need a new, uh, new, uh, like a new replenishment of oil, then we shall buy it at these prices that are actually there. Remember this last crisis we had, oil was about uh, you know, $70, $80, yeah, $80, $90, around there. You know, and those were very big headlines. Eh? But now we're looking at $130, you know, headed for $200. Yeah, and that is very, very scary, especially for us. Eh? Yeah, and many people look at it just in uh, terms of uh, fuel prices, uh, petrol, diesel, uh, vapor. Yeah? But <clears throat> uh, look at transportation costs, eh? costs for our food products, uh, timber, and so many other things that we export. Eh? You know, the price of exporting these things is going to go up. So that means either we reduce our prices that we sell or uh, you know, we pay more transport. Eh? So either way, uh, we're going to be affected and that will cause an increment in prices of literally everything eh? because everything runs on oil. So uh, yeah, this news is... Very, very bad. If the price of oil keeps on shooting up, yeah, things will be bad. But you know, shall be monitoring these prices here, yeah, on this uh, financial markets program, and you know, um, throughout the whole day, you know, you'll be seeing the updates on the squeeze back and all other instruments that shall be using to bring this information to you. Yeah, so oil prices, they are still shooting up. Yeah? So uh, today, let's just take a look at two events affecting the the forex market. Uh, that is the gross domestic product. Um, this one is coming from Europe, eh, from the European Union. Eh? So this is the GDP of Europe as a whole. So there are two events, both of them are at uh, 1 p.m. Um, the first one is uh, quarter over quarter. Yeah, and you know, the previous figure is 0 0.3. The consensus is also expected. The expectation is that this price, sorry, this figure will remain the same at 0.3 percent now there's no increment expected there then um, second event these are two high impact events eh? i realize that you know normally you have quarter over quarter or month over month then you have year over year so sometimes uh, year over year carries a bigger market impact than month over month and quarter over quarter but today we have quarter over quarter high impact year over year, high impact and expected uh, difference in uh, you know, what's going to come up today. Um, they're not expecting difference. So quarter over quarter is previously 0.3% and what is expected is also 0.3%. Year over year is 4.6% and the expected figure there is 4.6%. Now given what's taking place right now, if you've been watching the prices, Europe has terribly fallen. Eh? It has fallen below expectation in a very short period of time. Eh? So um, that obviously relates to so many other factors in the economy, GDP, whatever. There are so many ways all these figures are calculated. But um, yeah, but um, when something falls down, you know, seriously, like the price, it affects everything. Eh? You know, either visibly or invisibly. So. If you're, you know, if you're watching out for this particular event, yeah, uh, just uh, uh, this this could this could uh, send this euro 
further below. You know, we've been looking at these uh, prices falling down, falling down. Every time there is a speech from the ECB president, we expect some kind of upward movement, and sometimes we get it. Eh? But the fact of the matter is, uh, many events, eh, many things to do with this who haven't yet been resolved, and Europe is like, you know, it's in the middle of it all, eh? and they are really suffering. Their price is, the price of the euro is suffering, and eh? the currency is really falling, and yeah, so these GDP figures, when they come out at 1 p.m., yeah, you know, you, there's, you know, you can expect anything, eh? because right now we're in that state where anything can actually happen. Eh? You know, these figures were planned, uh, they've been following up, especially, especially the year over year. Actually, both of them, year over year and quarter over quarter, this war has just begun, you know, just a few weeks back. So, uh, whatever they were planning before, really has been... Uh, terribly interrupted by this war. So whatever happens today, uh, you know, just think of it in relation to what's taking place with this war and how the prices have been seriously falling. Uh, unfortunately, there are no other events today affecting the euro. A speech from one of the presidents or somewhere could have been good to explain uh, you know, what's happening with the GDP. Eh? Yeah, you may need some reports eh, or some speeches. Normally there's a report, there is a speech. But today, yeah, we just have the figures coming and there's no one going to talk. But uh, someone elaborating on this you know, can really give you some good insight. Eh? Even if the figures remain the same, um, there will be a certain curve somewhere that will be sort of pointing downwards eh? because everything is generally pointing downwards. Eh? So um, that's for the euro. Then uh, 6.30, we have uh, goods and services, trade, balance, yeah, that is for the United States. That will be at 4.30. Previous figure is negative 80. Yeah, negative 80.73 billion. And the consensus is negative 87.1 billion. So here we're looking at you know, things getting a lot worse. Um, yeah, the information is not actually loading. But yeah, for America, this one is uh, you know, it's not, it's not so good. Eh? Then affecting the Canadian dollar. Uh, there is an international merchandise trade. Now, this one, the previous figure is negative 1.4 billion, and the consensus is 2 billion. Eh? Positive, eh? so we're coming from a negative 1. Point, sorry, a negative 0 0.14 billion, and we are moving to a positive 2 billion. Eh? Now, Canada is one of the countries that. Um, yeah, naturally, they are somehow, you know, when, when, when Russia blocks out their oil, then Canada can step up, yeah, especially for Europe and America. Canada can step up, and, you know, they're also a big oil exporter. So it's an advantage to them. If you've been watching all the events that have been taking place in Canada, most of them are very positive for Canada. And they're really, you know, it's not, it's not good to say that they're benefiting from the war, but... Um, you know, it's time for them to step up and, you know, fill these Russian shoes, eh? those big size boots. Eh? Yeah, so, uh, you know, they are now they are facing a lot of advantage because of the war. Their oil is going up and with the prices going up, they are really benefiting so much. Eh? Yeah, because I think they can fill up the deficit if all these other countries come together, Saudi Arabia, where all the oil producing company, uh, countries, if they come together, Uganda as well, eh? we also produce oil. You know, we can fill in those gaps eh, and start also exporting crude oil eh, to those countries. Yeah, we can, you know, we can keep the prices leveled eh, somehow. Eh. But anyway, so the international merchandise trade uh, affecting the Canadian dollar, it's uh, very, very positive. And at 4.30, we shall have those results. Eh. Yeah, so let's uh, move on to these uh, Forex charts. Uh, first of all, let's take a look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin is now at $38,160, eh? now $161, it eh? just keeps on changing. Yeah? So just about $100, and, sorry, $38,100, eh? you can you know, round off to that. Eh? So, yeah, Bitcoin is really still moving down. Uh, it was previously at, um, the price was about 40 uh, 45, eh? you know, previously the previous high is that point there, but uh, in this monthly chart, uh, we've already drawn this uh, downward trend, eh? everything pointed to a downward trend, we have this first bottom, this second bottom, and 
price being tested, this area being broken with a closing candlestick and an opening candlestick. Yeah, uh, this is very, very long term. But uh, you know, I think price is you know, still shifting downwards and the lowest they can go, let me, uh, let me give it a real danger color, which is red. Eh? So red, that red line is uh, probably the lowest we could expect Bitcoin to go. The price there is 28,888.70 dollars. Yeah, so prices could easily shoot below down there if you bought Bitcoin into the 68,000, 69,000. This is a nightmare. Yeah, but if you're buying Bitcoin from the low, yeah, the lower prices shoot, the more your appetite as a trader should start, you know, your, your stomach should start uh, making those noises. Eh? Yeah, because you're seeing prices going lower and lower, that means you can buy, especially on an instrument like Bitcoin. Yeah, it is very, very, you know, it's very lucrative. Eh? People have become very rich eh, because of this uh, chart. Eh? So as the lower the prices go, you know, the more your appetite should just start building up. So you start buying and you make some profit as the prices move back upwards. Eh? Bitcoin is a very, very solid instrument to trade. So that is the chart, eh? still in between the 38.2 and the 50.0 in the Fibonacci retracement levels, then in the Fibonacci funds, we have prices at the 38.2. So yeah, we could start having some bullish movement there. It's very, very possible. It's very, very possible, but uh, you have to be very, very patient and wait for all this stuff that's happening in the world to somehow blow over. Yeah, so that is, um, that is Bitcoin, um, you know, that is zooming in into the prices. That is a daily chart. You can see prices are fixed in between the 38.2 and the 50.0 yeah, for quite some time. Since the 7th of January, prices have been in between there. So a break upwards or downwards will give us a very good, uh, will give us some very good information about uh, where prices are headed. Okay, so uh, let's move on. This is the, uh, the GBP CHF. Yeah, so we're looking at this one yesterday and yeah price uh, you know we're looking at this price breaking that point there so this is yesterday's candlestick and this is today's candlestick trying to make some sort of a comeback so yesterday's candlestick is a sort of a sort of a hammer yeah, it looks like a hammer there is a very small tail down there but it looks like a hammer on the daily chart eh? you know we have this long uh, tail up there and you know price is comfortably just below this point of support yeah? so we could probably be we could probably be having uh, you know prices breaking there we have a very serious support there every candlestick closed and opened and closed there and here it was very religious so the way prices were being supported at this level but now we have a break yeah, we have a break there and we can take advantage of it. Eh? So a retracement might be because of this RSI being below 30 or being at the 30 line, being oversold. You could have a retracement of price moving up there, but yeah, that is a very big possibility in the daily chart. But uh, you know, we have this area to trade. Eh? Yeah, this is a free range area. The moment we have good confirmation of price breaking that area of support, then we have a lot of comfort. Yeah, maybe we can put the comfort line just below this price action there, you know, the, the, that price movement there. And we can put our level of comfort just below there and we take about uh, 260 pips yeah, to that next area of support, yeah, which will be quite good. Eh? So we wait for price to break below there if we have some kind of retracement taking place. Yeah, that's okay, you know, this uh, RSA could move maybe to this 50 line with prices still, you know, uh, playing around this support level. And once we have this RSI in a good position to start selling, then uh, we can go down with it. Eh? Uh, when prices go below that line, eh? just below there, uh, that would be a very nice time to start selling. Okay. Uh, it's a US dollar versus the Canadian dollar. Um, this one here, I think we looked at this chart long ago, looking at this uh, area of reversal and Prices have now broken this top area in this one hour chart. And yeah, prices have, uh, you know, they've moved up above there. So I'll delete this Fibonacci retracement level. 
Yeah, this one here prices went to the maximum of 50.0 and then bounced back. Yeah? yeah, because this was a retracement, and now we know for sure that we have that upward trend. So, uh, yeah, so if, if this is going to be a very strong trend, which it has already proved to be, yeah, it has already proved to be that we had this kind of a reversal there, and now uh, prices are moving upwards. Eh? But there are still some, you know, there are still some questionable areas. We have here two high points. This is one high, which is higher than this one. So we have a case of divergence here. Yeah? These ones are sort of uh, lower highs. And here we have some kind of higher highs. Eh? So basically we could have, uh, you know, prices moving downwards sometime in the future. Or... Um, you know, the prices could easily break this trend. Eh? So this is our yeah, this is our point of resistance that is moving upwards with a diminishing strength. So once this area here is broken, then you know we could start buying and move up there. So uh, you know the, the farthest point we can probably look at is that point of resistance up there. But if we have prices seriously moving upwards, uh, we can apply the Elliott waves. Eh? Yeah, Elliot wave. This can be wave number one. Yeah, it looks uh, very, very perfect. Then wave number two is that one, and this one here is a bit sharp. Eh? Then wave number three, as it continues, uh, this one should be at least three times longer than this one. Eh? So if these prices are seriously moving upwards, then there's going to be a lot of uh, pips to collect from there. Yeah, if you look at it in the four-hour chart, yeah, that's what it looks like eh, if we're having that upward movement starting to form. Eh? So, yeah, that is something to keep in mind. Eh? Uh, still in this four-hour chart, we're here we're looking at a bullish movement. And the alternative is, uh, you know, there's always one alternative. Eh? You can't have a bullish, then you have an alternative of, you know, some diagonal kind of movement. Yeah, the good thing about these markets, you, are, you either buy or you sell. So the alternative to sell is, uh, we've already seen the divergence in the one hour chart. In this four hour chart, we have these, what look like lower lows. Eh? Yeah, right there. And yeah, if, for, if somehow the price, if the strength of this price pushes above this overbought position, we shall have a confirmed uh, divergence there that could, uh, you know, that could very easily take this bearish. So that is something to, to just watch out for. But if prices continue moving upward, then we expect three times eh, the length of this uh, first wave to move upwards there. And then, uh, you know, we shall have wave number four and wave number five. And uh, you will enjoy trading those, uh, you know, those Elliott waves. Eh? Okay, this is the US 30, the Dow Jones. Um, yeah, I will work on a concentrated time for these indices. But like I told you before, I'm creating a robot for them, which, um, you know, we shall see how robots work. Eh? In every program, it's good to see, you know, the ultimate form of trading eh, where technology, you know, the farthest that technology has driven mankind in trading is, um, you know, artificial intelligence. Eh? And, yeah, by all means, you need to see what it, uh, what it entails, eh? what happens when you have uh, an AI trading for you. So I'm creating one for these, prog for these uh, charts, the US 30, the NASDAQ, yeah, all those indices, uh, those very, very profitable charts. Eh? Okay, this is, the, this is the GBP, the pound sterling versus the Canadian dollar. Um, yeah, so we looked at this yesterday and we're, you know, we're looking at prices probably moving to this 38.2. Uh, this is a one hour chart. And it has been steadily moving upwards uh, right now. Eh? Maybe uh, it's always good to keep an eye on the strength of all these charts. Eh? Yeah, so we have the strength building seriously. Eh? Strength is building seriously. So um, the farthest point it could move will be at this overbought position. It's at this 50 mark. Uh, this 50 mark is also good for selling. Very, very nice. Uh, you know, if you, if you have some other types of analysis that you use and they're giving you some strength in selling at this point uh, by all means eh, you can go ahead where the 50 mark yeah, so many people sell off the 50 mark 
they rarely sell off the 70 market because prices normally don't get up there but um, yeah right now it looks like you know we could easily get up there yeah, it looks uh, you know, it looks very very possible if i add my own fan eh, just in between the 38.2 and the trend line eh, just in between eh, uh, if there's an equal distance there yeah, which is i think that eh? yeah so that's an equal distance between the red line and uh okay it doesn't look so equal when you okay let me just transfer it a little bit i think that yeah that gives it some kind of looks equal now eh? we have some equal space between the red line and the 38.2 fibonacci this can be our 23.6 eh? normally don't have it in the funds but uh I think I will program it into the program so that we start seeing it. So uh, looking at this, uh, you know, this potentially 23.6 level, we can see that the Fibonacci retracement, uh, not the retracement, sorry, but the funds that have been hitting that level uh, for quite some time. Ever when it when price broke the trend line, it went for the 23.6, resisted there, and it's now being resisted at the 23.6. So here. There is, uh, you know, there's some good reason to sell. Eh? Yeah, there's some good reason to sell. Technically, price has hit this um, invisible point of uh, resistance in the Fibonacci funds, and the RSI is at the 50.0. That is nice. Eh? But wait for a real, a real sell eh? here. You bet for this price to break this 23.6 eh? moves upwards. And with this strength moving to the 70 now there, you know, things will come down falling. You know, the bigger they get, the harder they fall. Eh? So from there, they will seriously be falling well. Eh? This is also a very nice fall. Yeah, that one, um, yeah, looking at this is a very good fall. Eh? So the reason behind that is it's a previous point of support, a very strong support level where prices were supported there. And... That is the point where this point, this trend line was broken. It met this 23.6 at that point of uh, resistance. And yeah, it gave us a very good fall. Eh? So, so many factors there uh, give you the confidence to sell. And you collect so many pips there. And that's in a four hour chart. Eh? The pips in between, uh, the pips in that fall are about, uh, okay, about 200 pips. Eh? Yeah, 200 pips eh? maximum. Eh? So, yeah, that, that, was, that was a very nice fall, and if you took advantage of that, yeah, <laughs> if, if, that is a very big if. <laughs> okay, the Euro USD, uh, this is a one hour chart. Let's uh, zoom out a little bit. It's, uh, yeah, it's in a place of a very strong, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a range market. Eh? It's, a, it's a ranging market, as you can see. This is a 15 minute chart, ranging 30 minute chart ranging just there yeah but uh yeah in, yeah it's just ranging there anyway so we need a break yeah a break will be either above that point of support or that point of resistance so once price breaks out of uh, you know that area where it is right now then we shall have some good price movement eh? yeah so we're looking at uh, you know there's uh, those are those are somehow some mild support and resistance those red lines but we have those previous ones that we had drawn and coming from this previous price movement. So a break below uh, one of these ones, uh, below these two areas of support will be very good. Let's start selling, then a break above. And if the Euro USD breaks above this point of resistance, uh, it's going to be open season. Eh? You can buy eh? because... Uh, yeah, breaking above here will you know, it will reflect on so much that is taking place in the world and that is taking place in Europe. Eh? So a break above there will be you know it will be very very it will be very crucial for us to keep an eye on and take advantage of. Eh? Okay, and yeah, that is Brent Oil 128 sorry 127.87 dollars. Eh? So that is a uh, yeah, these are the numbers that are really scaring everyone. Uh, Euro CHF, okay, Euro CHF has broken below the 161.8 Fibonacci, and yeah, we're looking forward to uh, we're looking forward to trading to this uh, 
261.8 eh? Yeah, they have to have this divergence pointing to sell, another divergence pointing to sell. Um, yeah, the previous prices there are not really. Yeah, this is this is like uncharted waters eh, for the Euro CHF. Yeah, so you know, good luck with that. Eh? Um, GBP JPY in the daily chart. Eh? So yesterday I actually entered a trade here. Yeah, and it looks good. Eh? You know, this was the point of selling, and this is a tech profit. Yeah, so we calculated all these things. This was the area of support. We have these two double tops, and you know, prices were you know seriously moving below, and prices are continuing. So the lot size that I used was 0 0.5, and uh, this is GBP JPY. Yeah, so far it is um, 137 dollars eh, in profit. Yeah, which is quite good. Eh? So this uh, this was more of an obvious trade, you know. But um, in a daily chart, it will take some time to get down there. Maybe next week, yeah, maybe next week, maybe the other week. You know, prices might. If we have, if we've already had these two sharp movements, maybe towards the end of the week we shall get some other sharp movement there. Yeah. So this price could continue downwards to this twenty three point six. We drew that Fibonacci. Based on uh, based on this trend eh, in the daily chart eh, that moved upwards, had some kind of uh, some kind of uh, this is divergence, eh, the lower highs and the higher highs, and yeah, that is a safe place to take a profit. Uh, selling again will be below all these bottoms, and we shall be moving to the thirty eight point two. Yeah, this is a very long time. So when price breaks and gets there, you take your profit. Then you get in again after all these bottoms, eh? after price has moved below all those, and there is about uh, 286 pips. Eh? Yeah, so that is, a, that is a good one to you know, just keep watch of. Um, yeah, you can draw the same lines on your chart, you can take a photo and draw and analyze the hell out of it. Eh? Yeah, the, now we. Now on the USD CHF, we had this triangular formation yesterday. We saw it in the daily chart, eh? and we are waiting for a break. The break hasn't yet come through. Prices are still being religiously. This is today's uh, daily candlestick, eh? so prices are still being, uh, you know, resisted and supported inside this triangular formation. So when we get a break, and this is a daily chart, this will be a very very nice break. Eh? A very very nice. Eh? Yeah, this is the German 40, one of the most lucrative charts. Eh? German 40 has fallen to an all-time low. Yeah, I don't think it has ever been any lower than that. Uh, yeah, this is another chart that I'm building a robot for. Yeah, so financial markets are not all about analyzing this, analyzing that, drawing lines and everything. Yeah, uh, technology has really forced the hand of people now to move into artificial intelligence eh? and... Yeah, we have to, you know, by all means, we have to get there whether we want it or not. We really don't have a choice. Eh? So, yeah, so I'm building uh, an automated trading system for this and the US 30. So, we've already seen the US 30. This is the DE 40, eh? the German 40. Eh? Yeah, really nice chart. Eh? Okay. Uh, you know, USD, our Elliott waves, yeah, we're still there in that kind of uh, range market. Yeah, nothing yet there, but you know, we I think we have, uh, we probably have uh, this this wave, this third wave being you know very much longer than the first wave, so maybe at this point we could start preparing for the fourth wave, eh, which will be very steep eh, in comparison to this. Eh? So you could probably have a very steep uh, point moving upwards. It could be a spike. It could be anything, but yeah, that will confirm. Our Elliott wave theory here. Uh, okay, there's still more analysis for Euro USD. I think, uh, yeah, this is the historical uh, information we've been looking at. Eh? I'm not deleting any charts. Whatever we analyzed before, we need to follow up on it. Eh? This was the last chart we saw yesterday, the NZD USD. Uh, yesterday it went even above the 50.0. Yeah? Yesterday, by the time we were drawing these lines, it was somewhere there, just had a spike. 
moving upwards between the 38.2 and headed upwards there, about 51 pips. Eh? Those are very nice pips. That's a very good number of pips. But it's a very big risk eh? because it was a spike. Eh? Maybe if you closed at the top, if you didn't, things yeah, you must be celebrating your Women's Day, you know, in a very... Anyway, this one, um, yeah, it's still a spike, but then, uh, you know, prices could easily move up there. We're still uh, fairly above the 38.2 and being resisted by the 38.2 fan. So prices are being held in between there. There's this kind of triangular formation that is already determined by the Fibonacci levels. Yeah, so a break up there could be, yeah, it could be very good for us. Eh? You know, a break up there could push prices above. Eh? Okay, let's take a look at just one more chart. Yeah, the GBP USD. Yeah, very serious breaks eh, in this chart. Eh? Yeah, how low is low <laughs> in, in such a chart? Eh? But anyway, uh, we're headed for that 26.8 Fibonacci retracement level uh, from this point of reversal. Eh? So we're looking at prices headed for that 26. Uh, 261.8 eh? yeah normally we don't go this far but uh, yeah you know war can make people do certain things that okay so that 27 pips in between where the price is now and the 261.8 eh? yeah it could easily get there so many people are looking at this point of uh, you know the gbp usd had moved below an oversold position yeah, technically, yeah, it gives you a reason to buy, but fundamentally, what's happening in, uh, you know, with Britain, prices are really shooting downwards. Eh? So, uh, looking at the daily chart, the next point of, uh, yeah, it has really broken, it has actually broken this point of resistance. Yeah, so maybe we move to the weekly chart eh, and look for more areas of resistance. The next one is that one. Eh? You can see if price will reach there, it is just below the 423.6 Fibonacci level, yeah, which is quite, uh, yeah, so to that level, you have about uh, 220 pips, then to that other resistance, about 340 pips, eh, to that other support. Eh? So I think that's the last chart for today. Uh, so you just, uh, you know, just follow up with these charts here and you see how you're going to analyze them. You apply your own personal kind of analysis to these charts, yeah? yeah, and, you know, just keep it in mind that, you know, financial markets, you know, they've come from way back, eh? there's been a lot of uh, changes, a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of, um, the right word is evolution, eh? yeah, these uh, markets have evolved, eh? they've evolved from just earning 10% to 20% per year to earning 10% to 20% in a minute, eh? Yeah, so that evolution is there. You know, let us embrace. Yeah, let us embrace change, embrace evolution, and embrace technology because you know these financial markets so they have changed on their own. Eh? It's these guys who make computers. Eh? The computer geeks. Eh? They started making programs that you know they've been pushing things. Eh? Literally everything. Eh? You can even sell things online. You can buy things online. You can buy things from China online, and you know some guy on a border border will bring them to your gate. Eh? So things have changed like that. They also changed the financial market. So the volatility is so high. There's so much opportunity. You just have to be, you know, just have to be patient and really hold yourself together when you're trading. Eh? And there is also the factor of artificial intelligence, eh? scripting and making automated systems. Eh? That is now the highest level we have gone to. I think from there we shall enter into virtual reality or whatever. But that's where technology has led us. And by all means, we must explore all of these options, eh? we must explore all of them. Eh? Yeah, ignorance is very, very bad. Eh? You know, you will feel bad when you're old and you can't do these things. And yeah, but right now we can do all this stuff. We can benefit financially. We can have fun with them. And by all means, let's do that. Eh? Yeah. So uh, enjoy your Women's Day. Uh, happy Women's Day to all the women and to all the men who love women and celebrate women. Yeah, happy Women's Day to you. And uh, yeah, that's it for today. Have a good day and goodbye.